How are you, Brian? Hi, Rich. So Scott Foster's trending right now on Twitter. How do you think the NBA likes that? It's terrible. It's a, it's a real commentary on where the league is right now. I mean, I, I think in, you know, from 30,000 feet, the fact that um, there's so much attention paid on the NBA and then an officiating assignment in a second-round playoff game can be discussed on national television and national radio shows just how far the, 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 the league has come in terms of visibility. But it's just not a positive trend. And um, there, there is a coming black eye to the NBA with the officials and teams. It has been building. It has been boiling. In the last two weeks, we've seen one player throw a ball at an official. We've seen a GM go into the official's locker room. We saw Chris Paul bump an official in game one for which he was uh, fined $35,000. Um, the officials are pushing back, which is one of the reasons the ejections are way up. The situation is boiling right now, and it needs to be turned down for the good of the game. So then how does Scott Foster get um, assigned tonight? Was this before the playoffs, or did, did somebody in the league office, after everything that happened in game one, with the Rockets' reaction to everything that happened in game one, say, let's, let's put their least favorite official on the floor for game two? How did that happen? Yeah, so the officials are the first four games of every series, the officials are assigned in advance. So Scott Foster was going to be game two's official, whether the Rockets won by 75 points in game one hmm. or lost at the end of the game on a foul call. Um, they are putting him early in the series to leave room for him to come back late in the series. Last year, he officiated game seven of the, um, of the Rockets Warriors series. Um, he is a 25 year official. This is his 20th playoff. He is routinely ranked among the top five to seven officials, which is why he gets these assignments. Um, and the thing about it is, Rich, that historically, if you are a visiting team, you want Scott Foster. There was a streak a couple of years ago where visiting teams won 12 consecutive games in the playoffs and Scott Foster was the official. Now, some of that is just variant. Some of that is just luck. Um, but I do believe that Scott Foster, for the, things, for the reasons that the Rockets hate him, um, especially what they believe is arrogance, um, he is not intimidated by a crowd. He will make any call at any time. And I think for a visiting team, typically you like to see Scott Foster because you feel like he will not be uh, pushed around by the crowd. Um, obviously, though, the Rockets don't care where the game is played. They don't want to see Scott Foster. But, Rich, if you were watching, and, and, and most fans would never watch this, but if you were watching the officiating assignments over the last three days, Scott Foster hadn't worked any second-round games yet, and he was on the second-round roster. So it was pretty clear he was either going to be assigned to Milwaukee tonight or Oakland tonight. The Rockets knew that it was a good possibility yesterday. So they did not know until today, even though these – so. The, the, the assignments are made but aren't released to the teams until day of? Is that the way it works? Right. Huh. Yeah, that's been the rule for years. Um, the officiating assignments are announced at 9 a.m. Eastern for every game from the preseason <laughs> to the final. <laughs> so how do you think Daryl Morey and the rest of the Rockets took that news this morning, Brian? <laughs> I'm sure they're upset, but, Rich, this, is all, this is, entire thing is a smokescreen. Okay. It's all an elaborate smokescreen. James Harden is in a slump. He can't make a shot. He's shooting 32% over the last four games. He's shooting 28% from three-point range. He's, he's trying to get the whistle. He can't get it. Kevin Durant is shooting 55% over the last five games and averaging 40 points a game. I don't care what official you have in the entire world over. If you don't turn that around, you're not winning this series. The whole thing is a smokescreen. The Rockets are playing everybody. They specialize in finding and exploiting inefficiencies, whether that's the corner three-point shot, whether it's the players that they elect to sign or to draft, or whether it's certain play calls that they know can, where they can apply pressure to referees, specifically the three-point shot. The rules on where you can land and how you can defend a three-point shot are vague. And the, rap, and, the, and the Rockets know this, and they take advantage of it, just like they take advantage of the corner three-pointer. The strategy is fine, but don't, let you, don't for think for a second that they've been historically wronged or something. Every team gets bad calls. Every team has issues with officials. By the way, the Warriors do not like Scott Foster. A lot of teams do not like Scott Foster. One of the other guys in this game tonight, Ed Malloy, ejected Kevin Durant in the last round. So... The concept that this is about Scott Foster 
or, or that this is about the rockets being wronged is a market inefficiency that the rockets are trying to exploit, and they're, they're, and they're sucking everybody into it. They're smarter than a lot of teams, and they're trying to fool people. Don't let yourself be fooled. Brian Windhorst in the Honda Insider Report from ESPN. You just said a lot right there. I want to pin it, put a pin in a couple of things and revisit, but I want to hit right here, right now, what I'm sure some Rockets fans are thinking upon hearing what you just said. The Warriors aren't jumping into the landing zone of the Rockets. You don't think that they're not taking some bunny hops and taking advantage of knowing what the Rockets are trying to do, Brian? Like, like I said, the rules are a little bit vague. It is legal for the, for the player who is defending the three-point shot to move slightly forward, okay? And that is what is happening. It is also something the Rockets are doing where they are, where Hardy is specifically sticking his legs and, and going forward on three-pointers. That last three-pointer that he was upset he didn't get fouled on, Harden took off about three feet behind the three-point line and his feet landed inside the three-point line. That is not a foul if you go forward like that. Now, were there other calls in that game where the Warriors came up underneath James Harden? Absolutely. Without question, there should have been a couple of plays called. Was that the reason that the Rockets lost the game? No. James, they're averaging 98 points a game. This is the number two offense in the NBA. They're averaging 98 points a game over their last four games. Their offense has lost its mojo. They got thrown off their rhythm by, um, by the, the Jazz, and the Warriors completely took away the Clint Capella lob game. And he had a miserable game. And Harden going 4 of 16 from three-point range and, and, and the Capella game being taken it taking up apart was the reason they lost the game. The rest of it is just a smoke screen. There are official calls that happen both ways in every game that it is that is part of the flow of the game. And, and you know, you pointing out as well, it's not just a Scott Foster thing with the Rockets. He's going to be universally disliked tonight. And it's not just a Scott Foster thing. There are other refs on the floor with history that's going on. All that said, don't you think it's odd that after Chris Paul and the Rockets made as public as they've ever done their animus towards Scott Foster and what they think is in the uh, same direction going the other way, that they keep him away from the Rockets all the way up until this series? I mean, uh, I understand yeah, the NBA. I mean, I mean what, what, I, look, I know the league can't t let a team just dictate who refs their games, but right. to, to keep him away all this point and then for the biggest series that these two teams might face all year long, certainly in the mind's eye of the fans, now they decide to return him to the floor against the Rockets? Yeah, it's a very fair, it's a very fair question. I don't have the data of, you know, for all I know, Scott Foster didn't officiate a Utah Jazz game for the first two months of the season and then right. officiated eight in the second half. I, I don't have the data of the average time between – uh, between officiating assignments. I do agree that that is unusual and seems to me that there may have been something at play there. I do not know how long they schedule the guys out in the regular season. I think it's a couple of weeks at a time. I agree that that is unusual, but I can't say for sure that that's anything out of the ordinary in the regular referee rotation. But again, I wrote a story about the officiating last week where I expected Scott Foster to be in this series. And I'm going to tell you again, if this sucker goes six or seven, I expect to see Scott Foster for a second time. It is, he is a top five official. No matter what anybody wants to say, they rate these officials this way. And he is there because of his rating. It is not a surprise to me at all that he is here. And again, even when I was with the Rockets yesterday at their practice, they had been watching knowing that Scott Foster was probably coming. And they were wondering when it was going to happen. And when they, when, they, when they saw that Scott Foster did not draw a game yesterday, and we were three days into the second round, and there had been multiple games played uh, and a game in every series, and Scott Foster's name hadn't popped up, they knew he was either in Milwaukee in a hotel room last night or he was in Oakland in a hotel room last night. I'm telling you, they knew it was coming. It's like a meme, Foster is coming, like Game of Thrones, Foster is coming. That's right. I mean, and I, I read that piece that you're referring to about officiating last week on ESPN.com. It's a great piece. I suggest everybody go read it. And in conjunction with a piece that just got posted in the last 24 hours from your colleagues Zach Lowe and Rachel Nichols about the Rockets having put together a memo they never forwarded to the league, but they did uh, express 
address and communicate the contents of the memo to league. Looking at Game 7 last year between the Rockets and the Warriors that Foster did referee, saying that the eight there were 81 potential missed calls and non-calls in Game 7 that cost him at least 18 points on average. And the memo, according to this article, essentially accused the referees of of throwing it. It's what I, so when you talk about how bad it is getting what the, this seems like it's now reached the defcon level that the commissioner has to step in what can be done to tamp down the Rich, the argument you're too here too smart for this you know the average fan who doesn't do this for a living i understand why they would fall for it you're too smart for this this is a smoke screen the the rockets missed 27 consecutive three pointers in game 7 James Harden shot 24% in the series on three-pointers. There was another game he had in that series where he went 0 of 11 from three-point range. No, I'm, that, I'm, They lost that series for a bunch of different reasons. No, I know that. I, that I'm not saying that their, that their argument has merit at all. What I'm saying is they're making it, and they're coming up with – I mean, Daryl Morey's putting his Sloan MIT to work right here. That's right. And, and putting it in the face of the NBA, and I'm sure he might not be the only team to do that. What I'm saying is it is ratcheting up. Your point is that is, is, is dead solid on here, that there's a boiling pot, there's a lid on top of it, what does the commissioner do? Does he start fining teams for, for even twitching in that direction? Or what, what can be done here to turn down the temperature so Scott Foster's not trending and we're talking about a huge game two tonight with a different filter? Well, um, they're, they're passing out fines left and right. There's been massive fines handed out in this postseason um, already. Um, you know, there's not a lot of leadership being shown um, you know, in, in my opinion, by the people who should be showing the leadership, um, you know, you know, Steve Kerr, for example, Steve Kerr is, is one of the most socially conscious and progressive thinkers um, in, in all of American sport. His voice is super duper important, but he has led his the warrior. The Warriors, to me, are the most egregious team in the league right now about the way they treat officials. Hmm. Um, uh, you know, Kevin Durant and Draymond Green have been out of control at times this year. One of the few ways. I mean, again, this is the Rockets being smart. I mean, I'm, I'm, I'm just, I'm not mad at the Rockets for trying to do this because they're just playing the game. I'm just trying to get people's eyes to open. It's almost impossible to beat the the Warriors four out of seven, okay? Uh, because they're just too damn good if they're healthy. Now, if Steph Curry sprains his ankle and misses three games, it's a different story. One of the few places where the Warriors are vulnerable is the way they handle officials. They lose their mind. They get ejected from games. They rack up technicals. They rack up flagrants. They get suspensions uh, for their things. So the, one of the ways that you can get to the Warriors is to ap- apply pressure to the officials and get them thinking more about the officials than they are about the opponent. And Steve Kerr, in my opinion, as good as he has done in everything else, as, as the leader of the Golden State Warriors, has not done a good job in setting an example not to let the officials, the officiating bother them. The Warriors allow the officiating to bother them, and I don't think Steve Kerr has done a good job to stop it. And I also think that part of the thing that's happened in the NBA since Adam Silver took over, it's been a much more pray, player-friendly administration. Things that got you suspended during David Stern's era with the officials now get you fined. Things that you got fined for during David Stern now get you, uh, now get you nothing. Uh, it's been a long time coming. And again, we're heading towards a boiling point. Like I said, just in the last two weeks, we have DeMar DeRozan throwing a ball at an official. By the way, you know what official he threw the ball at? Rich, <laughs> is it Scott Foster? He threw the ball. At, he threw the ball at Scott Foster. So are the Spurs? Oh my word! Are the Spurs being penalized to have Scott Foster do that game? Okay. Then we had Sean Marks again, a very high character person who has stocked the entire Brooklyn Nets team with high character people. It's one of the reasons why they've made such a good turnaround. It's one of the most admirable teams in the league. Sean Marks going into the officials' locker room to complain after a game like a seventh-grade parent chasing a riff to a locker room. That's not high character. That's not good leadership. And we've got Chris Paul, the president of the Players Association, bump, one of the guys who's supposed to lead the players, bumping an official. If, if David Stern was the, was, the, um, was the commissioner, he might have suspended Chris Paul. Mm. So what? That fine so there's no that fix. That is not good leadership. So that is not good leadership by these by these influential people. So there's no fix. 
Is that what you're saying? That it's just it, it's out of control and there's no way to there's no way to fix. It? I mean, if, if fines don't work, do well, you start? Well, it, it, it can't be fixed in one day. It, it, it's been mm. we've been heading in this direction. But my concern for the league is that we're going to have a blow up here. Um, and I think it's and then this series is particularly ripe for it, Rich. Again, because the the way the Rockets play specifically is aimed at applying pressure to the official. They, when they come into every single game, their game plan is three-pointers, layups, and getting to the foul line. The way James Harden plays the game is designed to apply pressure to the officials and take advantage of vagueness in rules to get to the foul line. So any Rockets game is mm. going to be somewhat difficult for an official. And that's the other thing. No matter what the Rockets want to say, every time they play a game, whether it's in the preseason or whether it's in the final or in the finals, they bring a certain baggage to the game. When the when the officials go over their pregame plan, this is one thing people don't really realize. There's three teams on every NBA court, and then you know, a half hour before the game, one team's going over its game plan, the other team's going over its game plan, and the referees are in their locker room going over the game themselves. And one of the things that they say is, "Hey, let's be aware that Harden likes to flop on three point." shooting and so they are they are predisposed to keep an eye on Harden and not let him get away with it especially at the highest level with veteran officials that was one of the other things that this audit bogus thing that the, that the Rockets are using to try to influence future calls did they said that the veteran officials um, when they studied it were more likely to make incorrect calls against the Rockets as if the veteran officials are somehow flawed what, what really happens there is that veteran officials uh, know the Rockets you know, schemes and game plans and trickeration, and they come into the game not letting them get away with it as much. You're the man, Brian. It's not to say that it's not, not to say that they don't miss calls, Rich, but this is a this is a multi layered thing that the Rockets are trying to say. Look at the surface, but it's actually much deeper. All right. Before I let you go, quickly ask him the poll question, Chris. That's out there today on yeah, our app. Yeah, Brian. Uh, three teams down. Oh, one. Who's got the best chance to come back? Bucks, Rockets, Blazers. What do you think? Well, the uh, the Bucks. We're the number one team in the league for a reason this year. Although you could see their inexperience in Game One, so I'll say the Bucks. But um, uh, Boston has to feel pretty good about itself. Brian, thanks for the call. Appreciate it. I will ask you about uh, more about your book next time you're on LeBron Inc. The Making of a Billion Dollar Athlete that was released earlier this month. Let's chat down the line uh, in a couple of weeks. Always enjoy our chats immensely. Thank you. Thanks, Rich. Take care. You met that's uh, Brian Winhorst at Winhorst ESPN. For more of the Rich Eisen Show, tune to Audience Channel 239 on DirecTV for free on BR Live or download the Rich Eisen Show app.